On your left at 8-0, and we do find his opponent whose name we will check because we do not want to get this wrong. And it is Sean Zendong, so we have it there. Fair enough. Game number one about to be underway. Thompson will start things off with a polluted delta. A wooded foothills here, and a passing the turn back to Jerry. An island, a Jace, I think we'll find that Pluto Delta is going to find a swamp. And we're underway here in round number nine. The Nong will sacrifice that Canopy Vista. Excuse me, that Wooded Foothills to get a Cinder Glade, not Canopy Vista. As he is Green Red Eldrazi. I want to see some Eldrazi shenanigans here. Kozlex return the draw. Okay. That I, I think is such a a big card for this deck to have access to. Being able to play a main deck sweeper, obviously good against decks like a target red, also very good against most builds of Jeskai because they're leaning a bunch on two toughness creatures. Monster Mentor, Jay, Soulfire, Grandmaster, and so forth. Sanctum of Ugin was the land. And if Jerry didn't know what he was up against before, well, he knows now. It only takes a Sanctum of Ugin to give you an idea. So here's an activation of Jace. They've gotten a lot more conservative with what their ancient tombs look like. <laughs> yes, they have. Hooded Foothills, the discard here is a duress. Thompson wants to know exactly what Shindong is working with. So you find a hand here of a forest, a Kozlek's return. Uh, looks like a Nissa's Pilgrimage in Ulamog. A crumbling vestige. Surprising to see this go into the deck. Yeah. But it doesn't really prohibit you from playing anything on curve, and then later on it's a, another colorless land for your various Thought Not Seer type of cards. This design really impresses me. Yeah. It's elegant, could have just appeared in an early Magic set. Very simple, but in the context of the set and the block, it's a really sweet design. I like a lot of the design for Oath. It, it just takes magic in such a different direction. It makes you think so much differently yeah. about the game. There's a Kozlex return. See you later, Jace. That's a magic card right there. Oh, yeah. I want to see Ulamog's return. Or, excuse me, Emrakul's return. You sure? You like playing with small creatures, too. Uh, yeah, you're, yes. <laughs> this is what Kozlex's return looks That's like. I, uh, I want no part of Emrakul's return. Monastery Mentor. Now, this is the kind of card that you need to be able to kill the Eldrazi quickly with. Be able to go wide, make a bunch of creatures that are pretty large because of all the spells that you cast. Now, this is another uh, another place where Kozlek's Return ends up being excellent. It's huge, If, yeah. if you can buy some time, uh, that's likely to just undo everything. Hangerback Walker was the draw there for Sean. Now, here's Hangerback Walker for two. Pass that turn back over to Thompson. Thompson will draw Canopy Vista. First time seeing Hangerback Walker here this weekend. A card that's really fallen off the map. It is surprising, though with an uptick in uh, Ildrazi, I think we're going to see more and more of this. Bloodstained Mire. I guess it cuts the other way, too. This is a really poor threat against Ildrazi strategies. That's true. A little, just too slow. Yeah. Slow and ineffectual. But very good for the deck. Great early blocker, and there's some light colorless matter synergies going on with the deck, good with Ukin, etc., etc. There is Murderous Cut, a Monk token on the way. Two Thopters there for Zendong. And he'll block with one of them. Because again, it's all about just buying time. Yep. Once he gets to his top end, I don't think there's any way for Thompson to come back. Another copy of Hangerback Walker, the draw. A forest to start. And just a passing of the turn. Hmm. Thompson will draw. I think he may have picked up a copy of Painful Truths. I mean, one of the draw threes is what he needs right now. He's very light on resources. A 
And there is painful truths. Three cars on the way. And now here's Treasure Cruise, another monk, more prowess triggers. I think Jerry wanted to play the land first to leave himself up with Crackling Doom mana. Got max punished by drawing two lands that come into play tap. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's drawn a Crackling Doom. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Just how he drew it up. Looks like it might be Mimetic Insight. Yep. Look at this turn. Two more cards on the way. That's three. So that, that's eight new cards. Yeah, we saw that turn before. Yeah. That is eight new cards. From nothing to new hand. Yeah. That is absolutely silly. Now we're just going to head back Sean's way. Now, I am a little surprised that he didn't play Hanger Rack Walker the last turn. Here's a bunch of mana. There's Hanger Rack Walker for three. I'm curious as well. I wonder if it has something to do with the impending Kozilek's return. Potentially. Also, it might have been challenging to predict that Thompson was going to go from spend five mana murderous cut your hanger back walker go to draw eight cards. It's hard to read that that's going to be the development it, it, the next turn. It's, it's hard to predict that, yeah. Just a little difficult. Looks like Thompson's going to play a Crackling Doom, Trigger, another Monk, more Prowess Triggers, three Thopters here. And now here come the Beatdowns. Monastery Mentor attacking for three, the rest of the creatures attacking for two. So a little bit of damage will come through. Wandering Fumarole the land, and now we head over the Zhendong. That's Crumbling Vestige. That adds a mana. Here's World Breaker. Trigger this. That's Kozilek's return. And there's also, geez, Trigger Sanctum of Ugin as well. Oh. Get a land! And you get to exile a la <laughs> Yeah! Now we're talking. That's, uh... I've seen worse turns. That's a turn. So now here's World Breaker. I was a little surprised they didn't exile the Wandering Fumarole. And now here's Kozilek's return. It's going to deal f five. thought it dealt four. <laughs> Deals five damage to everything. Okay, so kill all your stuff. And now search for a... Is that another world? That's another world breaker. And Disdainful Stroke is going to counter that. Still a nice turn. Yeah, I just... I, I guess... I, I, again, I'm just a little bit surprised that he didn't kill the Wandering from him because that's actually what he can lose. I agree. I, I mean, unless he had some specific concern about uh, having an extra black mana or extra red mana... Because Jerry's going to activate that and spin it. Deal four. All the dual lands strike me as being roughly the same. So I, I agree with you. Yeah, I want to kill those creature lands. Well, here's World Breaker again. Yep. I'm going to kill Watering Fumarole. I think, are we just chaining World Breakers? Yep. It's a lot to slog through. Throw that out yeah. there. Yeah. Throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to grind through. Yeah, it is. Fire impulse. Nice. The Eldrazi are certainly here as Thompson will just pass the turn back. There's Oath of Nyssa. First time. Okay. As you so eloquently put it, the green ponder. Oh, that was me? <laughs> <laughs> was that me that said that? Was that me? Uh, he, wow, he found, a, he found a shrine. Nice. So now you can play a world breaker, shambling vent down, and in comes world breaker. Yeah, I would want to be playing with four of these, I think. Yeah, I think so. I, <laughs> I think so. This, 
Looks to be a pretty nice magic card here. There is a smoldering marsh and a passing of the turn. Thompson going to pass it over to Shendong. We'll draw. It's just a World Breaker deck in disguise. Another oath. A mountain. I think you just found another World Breaker and a Coast Lakes return. Yeah, sure, I'll take this World Breaker. You're nodding with approval here. I haven't gotten to see this many Stone Rains in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly in here's, standard. Here's a crackly tube. <laughs> World Breaker. Just avalanche riders for days. Yeah. <laughs> just got to figure out what land to kill. Doesn't have haste. I guess Ravenous Baboons is a better analog. It's like a big Ravenous Baboons. Right, Thompson drawing live to Chandra. Yeah. To win the game right now. Drew Roast. And that is not going to do it. It was a red card, just the wrong one. So, Shan Zhendong is going to win game number one here over at Jerry Thompson. A constant stream of avalanche riders, as you put it. Well, they don't have haste. Ravenous Baboons. Okay, Ravenous Baboons. Fair enough. As his Green Red Eldrazi deck does win game number one here over Jeskai Black. Got to go to the sideboards here for both players. This will be a little bit interesting. For Thompson, he's got a Cletus, Trader of Get. Three Radiant Flames, two Roast, two Dispel, three Negates. Another copy of Chandra Flamecaller, Linvala the Preserver, an infinite obliteration, and an Utter End. Um, not really a whole lot to like here. Uh, the Utter End and the infinite obliteration seem totally serviceable cards for the matchup. Uh, possibly the second copy of Chandra, though that's a little slow to bring to the table, but uh, most of the sideboard here uh, does not amount to much. Player side of things here for the Green Red Eldrazi deck. Two Natural State, two Crumble to Dust, two Jadi Offshoot, a Kosex Return, two Ugin the Spirit Dragon, two Winds of Calcisma, three Roast, and a Void Winner. I would want the extra copy of Kosex Return here after seeing Thompson's creature base of Jace and, and Monastery Mentor and so forth. Uh, the rest of it here, I'm not really that into. Uh, I, I guess suppose the Ugans are okay, but Thompson's deck is pretty permanent light to begin with, so it's probably not the thing on the top end that you want, and the rest of the stuff is mostly for other matchups. Well, that'll give you an idea of what both players are working with here. Now, if you like Eldrazi as much as Shendong does, well, a place you can play him is in Washington, D.C. next month, where there'll be a Team Seal tournament with plenty of Eldrazis, plenty of allies. You should gather your friends because it's Team Seal. So you can find out more about that tournament right now. On March 11th through the 13th, Magic the Gathering heads to the nation's capital as StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Washington, D.C. Grab two friends to compete in the Team Sealed main event and receive a few extra allies in the form of three exclusive playmats, featuring Andu War Cleric, Core Sky Climber, and Malakir Soothsayer. In addition, we'll be bringing a few allies of our own, cosplayers Christine Sprankle and Jacqueline Foglia, along with an artist alley full of fan favorites, including guest of honor Therese Nielsen. Our three-day infinite challenge option lets you compete in all challenge events over the weekend and receive a complete set of all three playmats. Prefer 100 card decks? Our Commander Celebration option includes a Xur the Enchanter playmat, a set of five Commander 2015 pins, and much more. Grand Prix Washington, D.C. will also feature an expanded side event schedule that now includes two Super Invitational qualifiers. Each Super IQ awards tons of prize wall tickets, along with two invites to an upcoming StarCityGames.com Invitational. So take the oath, gather your allies, and register for Grand Prix Washington, D.C. today. Now, I know you won't be there, unfortunately. Conflicting wedding. Just found out, I think, right before I was about to book my ticket. I double-checked because I knew that there was a wedding sometime soon around D.C. It turns out, same weekend. Can't make it. But I will be, and I'm looking forward to it. Team Seal Tournament's always an absolute blast. So hopefully we'll see you guys there March 11th through the 13th, Grand Prix Washington, D.C., starcitygames.com slash GPDC for more info. And I'm going to tell you right now, as I always tell you when we do have artists in Artist Alley, especially for our guest of honor, Therese Nielsen, if you're going to get your card signed, get there early. Yep. Get ready. Those, those lines are going to be long. Get ready for a long line. Jerry Thompson, Sean Zendong. Game number two. Both players are going to take a look at their opening hands. Looks like Thompson's going to keep. You running back the dream team from last time? Uh, team last time, Ari Lax and uh, Tommy Ashton. We got 13th place in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, Ari got a team with someone else. I'm going to be teaming with Tommy and I's friend, Stephen King. Oh, yeah. Uh, assuming that he is going to get out of his bed and come, I, I do have a backup ready because Stephen might flake at the last yeah. minute. Very Stephen King thing to do. And I know Stephen might be listening to this. Y you better show up, my friend. We need you. <laughs> 
But that's going to be a fun tournament. I'm looking forward to it. Tommy Ashton, Magical Line's best player, as yep. far as I'm concerned. Never loses ever. He's won some exorbitant number of Magic Online PTQs. <laughs> yeah. An oath of Nissa here from Zendong. See what he's going to take off of this. As you, as you said, I call it the Green Ponder. Yeah, Green Ponder. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, clearly. As you see, the cards go to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Soulfire Grandmaster and a Fastic of the Turn. You can make a lot of analogies if you don't care about accuracy. You can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry Mac Walker, for example, it's an Iron Claw work. Yep. Arcbound Ravager. <laughs> <laughs> So far, Grandmaster, basically Seeker of the Way. Yeah. Here's a Duress. Explosive Vegetation, Ugin, Nissa's Pilgrimage, and just a bunch of lands. So maybe you take the first Ram spell there in the Pilgrimage? Uh, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, you, you know, you take the, this one, gives you a couple turns to draw a counter spell, another discard for the second one, and then the hand's just an Ugin and some lands. Yeah. Smoldering Marsh pass that turn back. Zendong will draw. World Breaker. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. My new favorite card in Standard. I think we'll just always bring you back to the booth whenever there's just land destruction very heavy in the format. Yeah. It'll be perfect for you. Thompson can only play a Sunken Hollow and just pass the turn back as Hangerback Walker's going to grow into a 2-2. Koza like the draw. The draw step could be actual anything. One copy of Kozilek in the list. Here's Explosive Vegetation. Disdainful Stroke says absolutely not. So far, so good, though, for Thompson. Got the two ramp spells out of the hand, and now uh, the rest of the hand over there. Kind of pricey. Could be time for that Canopy Vista as the land for the turn. I believe Thompson has a Jace in hand. Also has another copy of Disdainful Stroke. Here comes Soulfire Grandmaster. I like this attack. I think you got to get that Hangerback Walker off the battlefield before it becomes a 3-3. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you are giving up some long-term equity with your spells there. That seems like a pretty straightforward play where Thompson's kind of priced into attacking, and, and Zendong's got to take that opportunity to block and trade. What if Foothills land? Here come the beatdowns. We'll head Thompson's way. He'll draw. Magmatic Insight is what he's found. Also worth noting now as well is that what, that was card number four in Soulfire Grandmaster to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. So may, perhaps Jerry's intentions are, I really want to flip this. Flooded Strand the draw. And now he's in a weird spot because he kind of wants to keep the Flooded Strand to go along with the Insight. He wants to keep Disdainful Stroke because counter spells are great in the matchup. And then another card in his hand is Infinite Obliteration. Well, this turn he has access to infinite obliteration plus uh, sit back on Disdainful Stroke. And he'll draw a land at some point. It's not like the insight's gone forever. You can get back to that when he wants to. World Breaker was the name. Your fun has been ruined, Patrick. I'm sorry. It's okay. No more lands to destroy. But on the upside, I do like getting rid of your opponent's favorite card as well. Okay. Okay. And, you know, the set's not been out for very long, so we probably had to just buy him at the store or something. Like, that's those are real dollars you're exiling from his deck right now. That's a, a fine runner-up to blowing up someone's lands. Okay. I'm just glad to see that you approve. The rest of the hand here is Wooded Foothills, Ugin, and Kozilek, the Great Distortion. Jace will tick up to six. Going to slow down the Thopter. And now we head back over to Zhendong. Time to draw. Another copy of Hangerback Walker. Hangerback Walker's not shabby here. I, if Thompson's plan is to try to do the whole, you know, recur infinite obliteration a bunch of times and strip out all your good threats, one of the best ways to fight that is just by winning on the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, another copy of Hangerback Walker here, just a great draw. I'm going to search up a basic forest here with that wooded foothills. And a cinder glade with the other one. This will likely force the issue on the disdainful stroke, but then if Thompson wants to untap and flash back 
his copy of Infinite Obliteration and name something else. Well, now Jace is down to two loyalty, and the Thopters can finish off Jace. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on what the draw step is. Chandra. I mean, that's a little rough. If Thompson decides to go ahead and flash back that infinite obliteration, the Jace is done, and the rest of his hand's not great. I suppose if you are stripping all the top-end threats out of the deck, then you can realistically win the game with Chandra on her own. Yeah. Untap, get clear of the top tiers, and then you're hitting for six a turn. A duress. Got to take care of Ugin. Well... Ugin was the draw. Jace down. Pass a turn back. Thompson will draw. Well, there's the red source. He's got a fade now. For Zhendong, a land allows Ugin to be cast, and the game just might end on the spot. And then Kozilek in hand as well. I am also a touch curious about how Thompson wants to go about using this Chandra if he does cast it this turn. Does it just make some creatures beat down? It's actually just going to be kill Thopters, okay. The draw. It's a land. The Thopters essentially undo a full turn of Chandra anyway because they can always hang back and block. Sure. So I think it makes more sense to get off the table. The only cost here is now the Chandra's in Ugin range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's in plus Ugin Rage, not half the minus Ugin Rage, yeah. and that's a bit of a beating, as there is Ugin the Spirit Dragon. And you can see Thompson wasn't playing around this scenario because he had to wrest the Ugin out of the hand. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that long of a window here for Sean to find land number seven plus an Ugin, but that's what his draw steps yielded. Wandering Fumarole was the draw. He's going to have to cast Magmatic Insight, discard the Fumarole, draw two cards. Polluted Deltas. Plural. He'll play one of them. Pass the turn back, and it's an active Ugin now, and maybe, and maybe a Kozilek is on the way. Perhaps Sean Zhendong has found an Eldrazi deck that works. It looks like he's going to move to 9 0 on day one here in Atlanta. Well, I'm definitely all about the World Breakers. 4x World Breaker seems great. No matter what the game looks like, it's going to be an acceptable. Uh, I sort of jokingly say, half jokingly, half seriously say, mid-range threat for the deck. Mm -hmm. All the text on it is relevant. Yep. That's the other thing. Thompson will sacrifice. Polluted Delta is here. Mystic Monastery was a draw, and he will extend the hand. Johnson Dong is going to win this match over Jerry Thompson. Two games to zero. Green Metal Draws is going to take care of Jeskai Black. And we have our at least one undefeated player here at the conclusion of day number one in Atlanta. And it's very impressive stuff for you Eldrazi fans out there. This deck list will be found at some stage over the course of tomorrow, and it looks to be a pretty good one. And another nice thing about just having a lot of quality creatures to choose from is you're much more likely to be able to beat infinite obliteration. The